Emotions versus enthusiasm. Play with enthusiasm. Their emotions will wear off. Our enthusiasm lasts forever. Stick together, play hard for 60. All right? We've worked hard for it, guys. Let's go get this one. All for one on two. One, two, all for one! one. and they will receive. It's a short, high squib kick, and it's fair caught by Jeremiah Dadabo at the 50-yard line. That was an onside Temple, kick. And it's a great 50-yard line drive start for the Bull. Shotgun snap, Tyree quick throw caught. Charlie Jones, the wide receiver, down the middle of the field. Tyree Jackson serves up a laser. Tyree looking to the left, pressured, has to roll to the right, fires towards the end zone, it's caught! Bullseye! It's a Buffalo touchdown! Charlie Jones with the UB score from 33 yards away! We did a lot of talking today. I did a lot of yelling, you did too. <laughs> but here I am at a loss for words to describe an incredible victory for the Bulls. This was a show the world game. We thought that before it. They showed a lot of the football world as this game went on. It was going to be a tight, hard-fought game. I don't think that we ever expected it to be just as exciting as it was. Pistol formation. New tile fakes the handoff, stands in the pocket. Just playing a double move, you know, uh, deep ball and just squeezing the receiver and then just going up and make a play. Fires the ball to the far side corner. It is intercepted. Picked up in the end zone by Cam Lewis, returning to the 15 to the 20, 25, 30, 35 yard line and goes down at the 36 yard line. Cam Lewis wearing the 41 jersey today makes Solomon Jackson proud. I feel like you know, I already know he's watching all the time, you know, and I thought, I really think he had a, a way in this game today, you know, just him watching over me, allowing me to make plays. King goes in motion, handoff up the middle, got a hole, 15, 10 yard line, five, that's a Buffalo touchdown! The end zone marks the spot for Kevin Marks, first UB score. Buffalo absorbed some big punches from Temple, they gave up a lead, they had a 12 point lead, gave it up. Newtile now hangs it up deep towards the end zone and was that pass caught? Yes! Zeroes on the clock here in the first half. Right down the middle of the field, the wide receiver Randall Jones puts Temple in the lead. Buffalo still fought back the resiliency of the whole team. Every phase of the game had to make a big play. New tile has to pump, throws it short, it's tipped, it's intercepted! Picked off by the Bulls! They've been pretty gritty now for a little over a year or so, you know. There's no quitting in them and they're gonna keep battling. We know whether it comes on our end or not, they're gonna play 60 minutes plus if they have to. 
Temple really needed this game. They had a lot of stress this week after last week's loss. Finnegan blocked. Blocked, rolling in the end zone, recovered by the Owls. Touchdown for two to try to tie the game up. It's an end around. Wright has got a lot of room. He's at the five. Bull string him out now. He throws it, and it's caught That's for Philly the two-point conversion. Every time Temple tried to get the upper hand, every time that you thought, gee, maybe the momentum is switching back to Temple, the offense came on the field and had big, long, devastating drives. Third and three from the five. Tyree fade to the right back shoulder throw. Is it caught? Touchdown! Newtile gets it. Looking left, fade, left side, end zone, caught. Touchdown. This game comes down to one of the signature plays in UB Bulls history, the Tyree Jackson to Anthony Johnson touchdown pass done by Anthony Johnson, who barely played in the second half as he dealt with a personal tragedy. Last night, I lost my, my best friend. It was shot, so you know, I had, my heart was heavy, so I just wanted to play for him. So I just stuck through it, and I came on here and gave my all. 109 to go in the game. We're tied at 29. AJ goes in motion. Man to man. Shotgun snap. Tyree in the pocket. Fires to the middle. It's caught. AJ breaks a tackle at the 20. I mean, when you got man to man, you know, a guy like Anthony Johnson, you got to always know where he's going to be. At the 15, at the 10, at the 5, still going. Look at him go. Go line. Bullseye. It's a Buffalo touchdown. I mean, I don't know how much people are watching the guy throw up the whole third quarter on the sideline. That's why he's not on the field. To make a play like that with extra effort and everything else, um, you know, with the tank empty, it really says a lot about him as an athlete and as a person. I mean, you know, it, was just, it was just a lot of joy, you know. My teammates came over and hugged me because, you know, like they were there last night when I got the phone call. You know, they was there to cheer me up and stuff. They were able to come in and just uh, rise me up. New tile, the quarterback, gets the snap in the pocket. Looks, looks, pressured, hit, ball Bubble! pops out. Bubble! It's picked up by the Bulls on Wuka at the 25. UB's going to win this game. The defense comes up with the sack by Chuck Harris. The fumble recovery by Anwuka. UB's going to come out of Philadelphia with a victory. Hey, you didn't score! You didn't score! Great honor, man. Big brother. I'm just glad to represent him. I told my mom we was going to get it back, and we got that. Game over, baby. No way that flag, board. We went for That, 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 that's about an exciting game is you get going back and forth. They kept challenging your grit a little bit there, you know, and what you had. You can do unbelievable things for this program. Yeah, I told you you're going to write your legacy, and you started it with a win today. All for one on two. Oh, one, two. Oh, all for one. I got to get this one. I got it. We take a look at the top five plays from the big win last Saturday over Temple. We'll also get to know senior defensive end Chuck Harris. And Coach Leipold previews this week's game versus Eastern Michigan. That's all next on UB Football Insider. Welcome back to UB Football Insider. This segment is presented by SefQ, changing lives every day. It's time now for the top five plays of the week presented by ECMC. The difference between health care and true care. Number five. King goes in motion, handoff up the middle, got a hole, 15, 10 yard line, five. That's a Buffalo touchdown. The end zone marks the spot for Kevin Marks. First UB score. Number four. Blitz comes, at least one of them does. New tile has to pump, throws it short. It's tipped, it's intercepted. Picked off by the Bulls. Cam Lewis's second interception of the game. Number three. Third and three from the five. Tyree fade to the right back shoulder throw. Is it caught? Touchdown! It is caught for the Buffalo touchdown by Antonio Nunn. Number two. 
third down and 10. New tile, the quarterback, gets the snap. In the pocket, looks, looks, pressured, hit, ball Fumble. pops out. Fumble. It's picked up by the Bulls on Wuka at the 25. UB's going to win this game. And with 15 seconds to go, UB's going to come out of Philadelphia with a victory. Number one. 109 to go in the game. We're tied at 29. AJ goes in motion. Man to man. Shotgun snap. Tyree in the pocket. Fires to the middle. It's caught. AJ breaks the tackle at the 20. At the 15. At the 10. At the 5. Still going. Look at him go. The goal line. Bullseye. It's a Buffalo touchdown. Anthony Johnson when you need him the most. A 29 yard score to the All American Anthony Johnson. It's all will, all heart, all determination from 83 to get the Bulls on the board. Hi, I'm Charles Harris, AKA Big Chuck, number 92 defensive end on the UB football team. On third and long. Pressure for the backside. The football's out. Picked up, touchdown, Chuck Harris. Obviously show pass, so I go outside. By the time I get outside, Damone, I see him about to hit the quarterback, so I'm just getting ready to celebrate. But he hit the quarterback, and the ball rolls out. And my eyes just popped. Scoop the ball, and all I saw was the end zone. I didn't know what to do. So I'm just jumping like the little kid. Seeing Chuck come from, we both came from Michigan, we were both in the same class, you know, just watching him and how much uh, he's developed and how good of a player he is now, just watching him make that play and, and kind of build the momentum that we had on Ohio that really helped us that game. Back home, I didn't start playing football until I was in the 11th grade because we couldn't afford for me to play football. But, you know, my mom made every way for us, honestly. My mom is, is my rock. She's always been that person that always lifts me up and I'm grateful for every moment I get to spend with my mom. Growing up over on Schoolcraft, we never knew. We always heard about like people going to college for free, but we didn't think it was real. And so when I, I got the news from my coaches and they were telling me about the offers and stuff, and like, yeah, like they're offering full scholarships. Like, you won't have to pay anything. Like, you're gonna get up out of here. It was still hard for me to grasp, so I never told my mom, like, cause I'm like, man, this this can't be real. Like, this just can't be. And I, I was the first person in my family to go to college. I told my mom about my offers when I got my last offer. I gave her a present and it was, it was, it was a letter, it was a long letter. And it was just telling her like how I'm gonna go to college and how I'm gonna do it all and you won't have to pay anything. And she was like, what you mean I won't have to pay anything? So I, I gave her about 20 letters and she was like, she just cried to me on Christmas Day, and she was just like, words can't, like, words couldn't explain. Like, I did, it didn't really hit me until I got to college, but it hit my mom as soon as I gave her those letters. Buffalo was literally my last official, and I made them my last because we always was like, save the best for last. Like, I felt like Buffalo was gonna be the best official for me because they were the first D1 to really invest into me. I'm gonna commit to Buffalo. It's a home up here for me. Chuck Harris continues to make big, impactful plays on a weekly basis. How has he raised his level of play? I think he's raised his game immensely. I think Rock Bell and Tony, our defensive ends coach, I mean, that's kind of a hidden thing of adding a 10th assistant coach, breaking up our defensive line into two position coaches allows for a lot of extra technique work, and, and Chuck has really absorbed that. He's raised his game a level. He's worked hard on that pass rush. All right, well, Chuck and the defense going to get a test on Saturday here at UB Stadium against a fellow undefeated team. It's the MAC opener against the Eastern Michigan Eagles. It's always odd when you have a conference game this early in the year. Do you like that? I do. I do, Paul. I, I think the way our schedule works, especially in the month of November when we go to midweek games, this will allows us to stay in a Saturday flow without an open week, keeps us in routine, and that allows us to play without a short week in November. The conference part of it makes it exciting. We've had two non-conference games. It's great to get into conference play and, and have somebody like Eastern Michigan who's played you know good football to this point, comes in undefeated, will be a big challenge. Yeah, I mean, they're as excited in Ypsilanti as everybody is here in Buffalo. They, they got their FCS win, and then they go on the road and beat a Big Ten team in Purdue a week ago with a really good 
good defensive effort and a couple of big offensive plays. What's jumped out at you about the Eagles? Well, the consistency in which they've played really over the last two and a half years, Paul, it's been very impressive. Um, you know, two two years in a row now, they've gone into Big Ten stadiums and come away with wins. Um, they have an excellent defensive end and Max Crosby, one of the better ones uh, maybe in the country. Uh, you know, last year with the season that he had, didn't play in the first game, played an excellent game against Purdue. I think uh, offensively, they continue to be very consistent with the graduate transfer at quarterback. Um, again, a team that doesn't beat themselves. They do a great job of staying within their, their, their scheme and fundamentals of what they want to do, and they make you play excellent football in order to come away with the win. You mentioned their quarterback situation. They just graduated their all-time leading passer, but they get Tyler Wiegers to transfer in. He had been at Iowa, didn't play very much there, but in the first two games, he's been a revelation, completing 78% of his passes with three touchdowns and only one interception. Extremely accurate, Paul. I, I've been very impressed in two games. You can tell he's gone through. Even though he hasn't played a lot of game snaps, you can tell he's been in college football for a long time. Very mature, poised in the pocket. You can see he has a good command of what they're doing offensively, and he's been impressive. Yeah, so it's going to be a fun one. Not only is it the Mid-American Conference opener, but it's a pair of undefeated teams. Going to be a big game atmosphere at UV Stadium Saturday. Well, we sure hope so. You know, we have to you know stay focused on what we need to, but it, proud of our players to put our in this type of position this early in the season. It's a meaningful game, not just because it's a conference game, but it's another t step for, for us to, to take if we want to be the program we want to be. Yeah, 6 p.m. kickoff at UB Stadium. It's going to be fun. Coach, thanks for the time. Thank you very much. Coming up, it's Coaches and Cars with Defensive Ends Coach Rock Bellantoni. And we'll take a look at this week's Karuba Collisions. UB Football Insider continues in a moment. Welcome back to UB Football Insider. This segment is presented by Town BMW, the official auto partner of UB Athletics. picked a good one this is a 750 okay so this is the flagship sedan by bmw so seven it's the biggest the nicest most luxurious and this one has definitely the most packages of any cars we've driven today i'm going to put it in sport mode have you ever heard of sport mode in a car speak to me this so sounds good when we get in the car it defaults to comfort that's your average everyday driving that but when we go to sport mode it tightens up the steering and it's also going to change uh throttle response and shift points so if you want just go for it as soon as the light goes green Oh wow. So zero to 60 is four seconds in, in this big of a car. It's incredible time. That's awesome. I like going around the curve too when we do it. So if you can pick out a nice curvy area. <laughs> is there something for volume up here too? So uh, this one also has what's called gesture control. Have you ever heard of that? No. We can use our hand to turn up the volume of the radio. Okay. So if we go like this, see how it's getting uh, Alexi Law is oh, wow. joining us from you don't the have Red to put Square. It up by the thing, you just this go like this. Yeah, and if you get a phone call in there, you can accept it with that motion, you can decline it with that. Just putting your hand here. Exactly, yep. Oh, that's really cool. I really, really like this car. The, as much time as we spend on the road and recruiting, number one, but then as a family traveling and things of that nature, it uh, would be a very comfortable ride. I think I'll take it. Here are this week's Karuba Collisions. From the Temple 42 pistol formation, it's Gardner hitting the backfield and ripped down by Justin Brandon. Unblocked, there was a pulling guard, he follows him in, and that's a huge play for Buffalo to slow the momentum. Low shotgun snap, and Newtile gets sacked, Buffalo oh, no. ups out. And then right back into the arms of Newtile, Malcolm Kuntz. It almost looked like everybody stopped on that play. The, Kuntz kept yep. coming and gets the sack. They didn't realize the ball had been snapped and the offensive lineman on the left side just stayed in their stance. Kuntz runs right past him. Two touchdowns, two picks for Frankie Juice. Mm -mm. And the Bulls mm -mm. are all over mm -mm. the running play. Uh-uh is right. No. Khalil Hodge for no gain. Uh, Khalil Hodge comes in and shoots that gap and hammers this guy behind the line of scrimmage. Check out the Bulls on social media and choose your favorite Karuba Collision of the Week. Coming up, we take a look at all the fall sports around UB Athletics. That's next on UB Football Insider. 
This is UB Football Insider, presented by ECMC. The difference between health care and true care. The fall sports at UB Athletics are underway and off to a great start. Football defeated Temple last Saturday, and they're 2-0 for the first time since the 1983 season. Women's soccer is 5-1 on the year, and they've outscored opponents 12-1 over the last five contests. The ladies are home Friday, September 14th, and face St. Bonaventure at 7 p.m. For the third straight weekend, UB Volleyball has defeated a Big East program after taking down Butler last Saturday. They improved to 6-3 and three on the year. The Bulls close out non-conference play this weekend in Washington, D.C. at the American Volleyball Classic. The UB men's basketball team received their 2017-18 conference championship rings last Friday after practice. The Bulls had the best season in program history, finishing 27-9 on the year, winning the MAC regular season title, the 2018 MAC tournament championship, and advancing to the round of 32 in the NCAA tournament after defeating fourth-seeded Arizona 89-68 in the first round. This is their third conference championship ring in the last four years. Season tickets are on sale now. This week's Training with the Bulls piece highlights the unique way that the UB women's tennis team is working out to defend their Mid-American Conference Championship. To be a champion, you need to train hard, both physically and mentally. Coach Kristen Maines is pushing the team to outdo last year's 17-4 season by taking the squad to a ropes course in Ellicottville, New York. This opportunity helps grow the team as a whole, working together for a common goal. It's what it will take to make this group of talented young ladies champions again this year. We did! Make sure you're here Saturday to help black out UB Stadium. It's the Bulls and the Eastern Michigan Eagles. It all gets started in Stampede Square with the pregame concert by Chase Bryan at four, and then it's kickoff between Buffalo and Eastern Michigan at six. We'll see you at UB Stadium.